All right, guys, we are about, we are just waiting in line right now just to uh, be able to actually tour the locomotive shop here at Tweetsie Railroad. That's one of the actually nice perks that you get to do um, on day one and day two of Heritage Weekend. So it's, uh, they only do it once a day, with once on both days. Or at 2.30, so it'd be like 2.30 today, which is Saturday, and then 2.30 on Sunday, so definitely pretty neat, because I've never, many times I've been here, I've never actually got to tour the shop itself, so hope you all enjoy. Alright, we are off. Yes, I know that's cold. Can I have, can I have, into the shop now. shop uh, we've been in this shop for 25 years now uh, uh, it used to be in that little building all this used to be in that little building behind me uh, that old shop was built in 1960 uh, in here we have all the machines and the tools to maintain the Tweetsie Railroad rides trains tracks and facilities uh, these machines right here some of them are uh, these two machines are out of the old ETWC shops. They're from the 1890s. Uh, this is our wheel lathe. We put locomotive wheels, car wheels. We threw them up in there. That press right there will, it's 300 ton press. We can press on and off drivers, wheels, crank pins. Um, we do a lot of contract jobs for a lot of local people here too. Um, the rest of the machines in here are lathes. We use them every day when we're rebuilding stuff, uh, making parts and rides. Uh, we got a couple sets of wheels in here. We're getting ready to ship out. We do uh, contract work for several different operations. Uh, the ones in the floor are going to Bush Gardens, Wheat, not Williamsburg, Tampa. They've been here and they've been completely rebuilt. New tires, new crank pins, new axles. They've been here about a year. Um, we're going out next week. But, uh, we do. We do all kinds of stuff. like that mouse mine engine. That's part of our duty. We had to swap them out this morning. Uh, years and years of use. We give them wear and tear. That's why we got spare. That's why we got two train engines. Um, the crew here, uh, me and Matt Ernst. Uh, I'm the assistant, Matt. He's actually running 190 right now. So I could be out here in charge. Uh, we both come from the days of Frank Coffee being here at Frank Aldridge. Uh, uh, he started here in 84. I started here in 97. And uh, we 
run the whole operation together. Uh, there's um, 10 of us in here. Half of us work with the railroad, the other half work with the ride. Uh, all the engine crewmen or the train crew today, they're the ones that help take care of the engines. We do all the work in here. Uh, if you were in here Thursday, 190 was in here getting decorated and getting set up. And it's coming right back in here Monday morning, Monday afternoon, to get Halloween. So uh, uh, we have a lot. Right? We're, we're getting ready to get in our toughest season, which is the Halloween season, Christmas season. So the rest of the season is pretty easy until we get to that, the setups and teardowns. But uh, I don't know if y'all, a little bit about the engines. Number 12 is the original one. It uh, ran on the old Tweetsie line between Johnson City, Tennessee, and Boone, North Carolina. It was built in 1917. Uh, it's pretty much original. It's the original boiler, most of the original components. Uh, uh, for an engine of its age, it's in remarkable condition. It has been well taken care of, not just here, but on the old ETWMC. 190, um, it's coming around the corner right now. Um, it's a U.S. Army engine built in World War II for the White Pass to run on the White Pass in Yukon. Um, it was left over after the war and stayed in Alaska until 1960. And uh, 19, in the winter of 59, they decided they needed a second engine here because the operation got big enough that they couldn't afford the train to be down. So they bought the second engine, brought it in here, and got it running the next summer. So since 1960, it's been 12-19. Uh, in case you look, 190 looks familiar. Uh, Dollywood has 492, which is the same engine. They both, uh, Tweetsie used to, Tweetsie actually built Dollywood, and when they brought 190 down, they brought it here, and sent 192 over to Dollywood, on the River Railroad then, and opened it up. So that's why they look the same. They're the exact same engine. They're one construction number apart. So, um, I think, uh, I'll let y'all ask questions, because that might be the easiest way to figure out what we Go ahead. How do you decorate the ghost train uh, for Halloween? Um, a lot of smoke and mirrors, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but um, the skull that everybody sees, it attaches to the front of the boiler. Okay. Uh, there's a couple stuff. Like the very top stud under the headlight, we pop it off and it goes on there and then it clamps around the handrails and stuff. All the rest of it is... Uh, we put black lights on the under the air tanks. That's why the rods glow. We put uh, UV paint on it. So, um, you know, it it takes us about 40 hours to turn it into the ghost. <laughs> and we got to do it quick this year because I know a lot of people have heard we are getting a new train car, a new car. It's going to be green just like the green car. It's going to be here the second week of September. So we gotta get 190 decorated and get her out of here in the shed so we can get the green car, new green car in here and get it ready to go hopefully by the Christmas season. Okay. So, thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. What's your question? What are all these stuff for? This is all the tools it takes. Wow. How long does it take you to do it? Depends on the job. Wow. Some, some things takes days, some things takes just hours. Y'all got him. Go ahead. So, uh, all this is narrow gauge. Yes. Uh, what was the purpose of narrow gauge compared to standard? Cheaper to build, less right away. You can make tighter turns in the mountains. That's why they're very common, like Denver and Rio Grande up in the Rockies, all the tight turns. Okay. Uh, our, like a, what we consider a tight curve here is 22 degrees. That's about the maximum 190 will go through. You put that on a standard gauge railroad, it most of you, even your smallest engine will have trouble going around it. So it, it was just made to get in and out of the mountains. It was cheap too, cheaper to build. Okay, any 
make them more top heavy or? Uh, not really, they're proportional to the, the boiler is proportional to the gauge. Okay. Except when you get out to like the rear grand, when they got the big boilers with the small gauge, those are not heavy. Yeah, but not really, not that bad. Okay. <laughs> Nick, anybody else? Um, what happened to some of the cranes? What? What happened to some of those cranes? Most of the ones that are not with us got scrapped in the in the 1950s. Yeah. Yes. Uh, three is the minimum to fire up number 12. It usually takes us about four and a half hours to fire number 12 up. 190 takes five and a half to six hours. So, if you think about it, we're going to run it. We started, like, we fired 190 on Thursday and fired 12 yesterday. So, we're it's easier to do one a day instead of doing both at the same time. So go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So what's the average maintenance each week for an engine look like? That varies. Uh, that can change daily. Uh, the way we maintain them here, we try to... Right now, right now we're evaluating the engines as we're running them for winter work right now. So we're planning, if we detect any wear and tear or we don't like it, uh, we're already planning on fixing it this winter. And not, not to be arrogant or anything, but the old quotation was, what a lot of places consider broke in, we consider wore out. So we try to catch it well before. Like, uh, just for example, a lot of the crank pins in our locomotive, are original because we catch the rod grass before it beats the pin out of it. So like number 12, number 12 has axles in it from 1944. And, and that, that just says how much we pay attention to. As soon as it starts knocking or pounding, we're in there fixing. So like uh, we already have, we already have a game plan for the next two winters. So uh, 190s wheels are gonna come out and get turned. And number 12 so wheels gonna get turned. One of, we don't know which one, works, but we're all we kind of look ahead a little bit. We try to plan everything. Go ahead. How much coal is it consumed, say, on a daily basis? Ah, uh, number 12 burn about three tons on the average day. 190 probably about two, two and a half. Uh, yeah. We did. We did in the, from about 96 to 04. We brought. All four Orlando engines through the shop. Uh, the first one we redid over there in the old shop, and they took the profits off the first Disney engine and built this shop. And we rebuilt the rest of them in here. Nick? What is the longevity of these engines? Um, I mean, can they, can they last indefinitely if you keep maintaining them? Or? Yeah. Okay. Eventually, uh, eventually, like firebox sheets, fluke sheets, have to be replaced. They're they're consumables in the steam locomotive market era. era. Uh, most boil, most locomotives are built to last about thirty years, and so uh, we're getting into eighty and getting close to one hundred ten and number twelve. Uh, number twelve does have its original firebox from 1970. That is very rare for engines that age. Um, and we keep that, we got that in the back of our heads too. We're knowing the time is coming to repair it, replace that firebox. But to get 110 years out of the furnace and the engine, it's pretty good. We change them in here. We, uh, I'm actually, I'm one of the ones that cuts them out. We'll cut them out with a blowtorch, put new ones in, drive them in. About every 10 years. What part gives you the most problem? What part gives you the most problem? Part? Oh, well. Gives you the most problem. Or the. 
on the day to day basis running the engine, the bell rings. You know, they're the most cantankerous pieces on the thing. Uh, but uh, the air compressors give us fits. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had to press the quit on some 190. Just so happens we're switching engines the next day anyway. So we had 12 ready. So we had switch. But uh, those things, you know, can give us trouble. Late in the last little bit, we got it fixed. But, so, uh, but there's no real pattern really what gives us trouble. We, we just kind of pops up, something else pops up, fix it, and move on. You know. And I think about these trains is, in like modern equipment and computers, it says you got a problem, you can't run it. It's like the new rides we got here, it has a computer on it. If it has a fault, it won't run. That train, we can be running it all day with a problem, and nobody else here knows about it but the two guys running it because they know how to manage the problem and get through the next day. That's what they, that was kind of the old tricks they taught us so years ago. You know, deal with your problem and make it look like everything's okay. Yeah. Uh, probably one nine. Yeah, it'd be five speed, yeah. You have a favorite to run? Depends on the day, you know. Uh, number 12 is easy to run. It's very easy to run. It responds fast. Uh, going to turn to it, it's hot because you're sitting by the boiler all day. Uh, 190, it's comfortable, but you know, it has this quirk. It's more quirky. Takes a little bit more paying attention to it to keep it smooth. Because she likes she likes to spin. You notice people taking off. Da, 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 da. She likes to spin if you get too much steam to it. So. Um, I used to really love to run 12 a lot, but as I've gotten older, kind of started favoring 190 a little bit more this year. Yeah, I don't run as much as I used to. Uh, DJ and David are the main crew. I just feel them when they need a day off. So. Uh, I'll just take whatever I get, yeah. You know. Like me and Matt, uh, Matt likes to run 190 when it's out yeah. for lunch breaks or days off, so a lot of times I let him do that, and I don't mind running 12, so I'll run 12 when I got to feel in. I feel in, so, but, you know, uh, they're both not, they're both very good in operating. I've seen a lot of engines, been all over the country working on them. And these two here, about the most reliable locomotives I've ever seen. And that goes back to the care that started here in the 60s with coffee and uh, Ralph Crow Hill, Harden Coffee and all them. It just passed on through the years. And we maintain at a high standard. That's 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 the Tweetsie standard. It's a high standard. So we hardly ever miss a trip. Uh, I don't think we missed well, many years we go by, we don't ever miss it. We like it anyway. Yeah. What's your question? How old is one of these tools in this saw? How old? How hard? How hard? Huh? How, How hard? hard? Oh. Oh. Uh, that hard. Yeah. <laughs> That oh, machine right there is very difficult to run. I'll say that. Because it has it, is, it was made in the 1890s, it's not user friendly. There's only a couple of machines running. I've never run it, so but uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Johnny and let him do his part. Yep. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome with uh get Johnny and he'll tell you all about what to do with the money that it, Yes, they sir. Take from the coach, don't they? Okay. We'll put out these coaches going over here. The mouse mine is number nine, one of the cars that they got. Nine, two, eight, one, nine, nine. Tim, somebody's going to have to get most of these lights. Oh, you're good, you're good. If you not already met me after this, we're doing it.
What's really neat is about the uh, about the shop as well. On a, is that uh, they work on the rides here as well. And here's two of the cars that they've got for the uh, Tweety Railroad. I guess I think it's called uh, Turnpikes. I think it's called or Raceway. I can't remember what it's actually called on the ride. We well, always called it uh, the Tweety cars anyway. Growing up. Um, so it's actually pretty neat even seeing over here near the shop area. And then like I said, there's the coal. All the coal right there that they have for the two um, steam engines. Alrighty guys, that was the tour of the shop. More so like a questionnaire kind of deal. Yeah. And then uh just kinda kinda get you at least a sneak peek, sneak peek inside of the shop. Pretty neat that they uh had some stuff that was actually gonna be gonna go out for uh what was it bush gardens tampa yeah they were doing said. something for bush gardens tampa yeah they used to work on uh the trains for disney yeah from what do you say 97 to 2004 something like that but like the old shop this used not to be the this is the newer shop that was paid practically by the first disney project that yeah, they did that so that was pretty funny, funny that we're looking they did at the first train they said and then they built the shop and then they did the rest of the four yeah. the three trains in there yeah but it's i guess it's, it's pretty funny to go uh look what disney built <laughs> so, definitely uh hope you all enjoyed the tour of the shop and like I said, keep a look out for the rest of the videos that's going to be posting out this week for heritage weekend at tweetsy railroad